In this blog, we're going to see a family of techniques collectively known as ESDA. First, let's look at what ESDA stands for, what it means, what types of techniques it comprises, and what we can do with those. ESDA stands for Exploratory Spatial Data Analysis. And to understand really what the term stands for, I think it's more useful to start unpacking it from the beginning, from the end, sorry. So it's a series, it's, it's data analysis, so it's a series of statistical techniques meant to help you understand data better. Now, it's not for any type of data, it's, it focuses on spatial, and it doesn't only focus on spatial data, the key thing is that it focuses on the spatial dimension of data. You may have data that have a spatial dimension, like location, for example, but then also, also non-spatial dimension, like other statistical attributes. So ESDA is a series of techniques that will help you exploit and explore the spatial dimension of your data. And in other words, it's a series of techniques that it places space as a first-class citizen in a way that if you remove the spatial dimension of your data, the types of answers that you would find for your questions would be completely different if you follow ESDA techniques. And then finally, an important aspect on the focus of, the, of these techniques is that they are exploratory, which means that they are much more about learning from your data, finding things you weren't expecting, and particularly asking questions much more than answering them. So what, is, what can ESDA help you answer and how can it be useful? Well, it can help you answer questions of the type, is the variable I'm looking concentrated over space? Do similar values, so values that are very similar to each other, correspond to observations that are also located in space close to each other. Or in contrast, if I find two values that are very similar, can I expect them on average to be farther apart from each other? Other types of questions that you can answer with ESDA are questions about clusters and what we will later call spatial heterogeneity. The questions like, can I identify any particular areas where there are a concentration, there are concentrations of values, or in other words, where my values are clustered. And as I was saying, more important than the answers that it can provide you, it are the questions that these techniques can lead you to ask after you apply them and you analyze your data through ESDA. Questions like, what is behind the pattern? What are the generating process? What are the, the main underlying factors that generate this map that I'm observing and I'm analyzing through ESDA techniques? Why, now that I've found ESDA can help you find patterns of clustering or can help you find clusters. But the next obvious questions when you find them is, why do we find this cluster of data in this location of the map? Why is this pattern so particularly and so markedly geographical? Why do we observe certain clusters over space? And the value of ESDA in many ways relies much more on the questions that you can ask once you discover certain characteristics and certain spatial traits of your data set than the questions that you can that it can help you answer. The questions that it can help you answer are useful, but usually they're only the first step in the entire process of analysis. It's much more about what you can learn new you didn't know or you didn't even know it existed in your data that ESDA can help you answer.